Last year, CNN President Jeff Zucker gave an interview to a publication, Variety, for a puff piece literally entitled, How Jeff Zucker Made CNN Great Again. Pretty hard-hitting story. In the piece, Zucker explained his formula for greatness. Hard news, hard news, and yet more hard news. Quote, he said, I think our air, as opposed to others, is truly fair and balanced. Zucker said that, apparently without snickering. Which raises the question, how much CNN does Jeff Zucker actually watch? Has he seen Jim Acosta lately? Acosta is CNN's senior White House correspondent. That's a title that suggests journalism rather than uninformed commentary. And yet here's Acosta from just two days ago unloading what is clearly a pre-rehearsed little editorial on CNN's air. Watch. I think President Trump, Brooke, uh, now has the world record for injecting politics uh, into the aftermath of a terror attack. Uh, that is exactly what has happened in the last uh, 12 hours or so, as the president has been tweeting about this. This president won a world record for injecting politics? According to Jim Acosta, reporter, that's, quote, exactly what happened. Hmm. Can we get some documentation for that claim? A certificate from the Guinness Book, maybe? Did CNN's most visible hard journalist just accidentally slip into third-rate punditry? Looks that way, and it probably wasn't by accident, actually. As a veteran Acosta watcher, we've noticed a theme here. Here's a greatest hits reel. I think we saw the president's true colors today, and, and I'm not sure they were red, white, and blue. He is ushering in a Cold War, a return to the Cold War between Washington and Havana. They were not, not just seeing a press conference go off the rails or, or jump the tracks. You were watching a presidency go off the rails and jump the tracks. At times, this White House has an unhealthy fixation on what I call the three M's, the Mexicans, the Muslims, and the media. You count the cliches in all those statements. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot more of that, but you get the point. Keep in mind that as of this morning, Jim Acosta was still listed as CNN's senior White House correspondent. Now, that's a different job from being a talking head on one of those panel shows with 19 guests, all of them minor political consultants. At least it's supposed to be a different job. Is Jeff Zucker watching any of this? Joe Concha writes about the media for The Hill. He watches all of it, and he joins us tonight. Look, Joe, I'm not attacking Jim Acosta for bad punditry at all, though obviously that's bad punditry. But just for, I'm kind of wondering what the boundaries are. I mean, if you're a White House correspondent, supposedly committing journalism, gathering facts, bringing them to your audience, how can that person coexist with the person we just saw? It cannot, Tucker. I mean, as far as reporters are concerned, you could say that Jim Acosta is the face of the anti-Trump movement. And that's fine if he's an activist or even an opinion right. host like yourself. The problem is, as you've noted, he is a senior White House correspondent for one of the largest news organizations in the world and what that does to CNN by extension, fairly or not, because there's plenty of good reporters over there, it gets labeled as not an objective news network that leads with facts first, but as the opposition party. And if you talk to folks within the administration, and I have, and you ask them, are Jim Acosta's day-to-day -day antics in terms of making himself the story, is that good or bad for you? And they enthusiastically say yes, because he is making our argument for us that not only is the media as a whole, because now they could use a broad brush, negative towards us, but they treat us with, with hostility. And they're actually, during these press briefings, taking a side on a position and openly debating us on it. That's not what White House senior correspondents do. Well, it's, and, yeah, go it's ahead. not. It's not. And, you know, for all the grief that Fox takes, mostly because it shows like this, that I'm jumping around, getting my face, your face, in my opinion, and I get that's fine. Our guys at the White House don't behave like that. I mean, they're not running around giving little editorials about things. They never have been like that. Does no one else notice that this is happening at CNN? And by the way, I should just say, you're right. There are some really good people at CNN. I know them. I used to work there. And there's, there still are. But Jim Acosta seems to discredit them. And you're saying, is anybody noticing it? Well, of yeah. course they are. I mean, he's, he's one of the most visible people on the network. A lot of people watch the press briefings. It beats some soap operas on major news networks. That, that's a true fact. Let me read you. Uh, <laughs> there was a profile on Acosta uh, in Politico at the end of September. And this is how the last paragraph reads. Acosta took a last sip of his beer, content that, and I'm going to accentuate the words here that tell you everything wrong about the way he's going about his job, content that he was on the right side of history, quoting Acosta, people are going to look back at this moment and ask each and every one of us, what did you do when Trump was doing this to America? What role did you play? 
Now that's taking a side and saying that my ideas are better than your ideas and my worldview is more righteous than well, yours. He, he sounds like Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Was he a theologian or something? I don't know who I that thought is. he was a white, it's just, you know, a, a German theologian who was murdered for his beliefs by the oh. Nazis. I mean, the point is he, he makes it sound like he believes he, he has a moral mission when I thought he was supposed to be a reporter. Yeah, and, and the problem is that it's not just Jim Acosta, uh, but other pundits at that network. Uh, the CNN political analyst, Brian Fallon, he was the national press secretary for Hillary Clinton. I asked your producers to put together this tweet, uh, to put it on the screen, because it really just shows you what an analyst, a political analyst, should not be doing. He says, that's a live look at Ed Gillespie campaign strategy meeting. He tweeted this out last week. Ed Gillespie is running for Virginia governor as a Republican. He came out against Charlottesville and that violence and that horrible day that happened there yeah. more than anybody. And you have an analyst doing that. Or you have April Ryan, who is a White House reporter for American Radio Urban Networks, but also was a CNN contributor and is on that air quite often. And she asked the press secretary just two days ago, do you think that the administration thinks that slavery is wrong in the U.S.? You don't ask a question like that, Tucker, if you want a meaningful answer. You ask a question like that no, to make yourself the story and get retweeted and go viral. I love how they're attacking Ed Gillespie as some kind of extremist. I mean, he's so modern. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, anyway, someone told me the other day that Keith Oberman isn't well. Have you heard that? Uh, Keith Oberman, since the theme tonight is making yourself the story, obviously he likes to say things that are provocative and over the top. That is not what's surprising. But on The View, and I don't know if you have this soundbite, but on The View, oh, you do, okay, uh, if we, we could play that real quick. You said recently uh, via tweet, that Trump and his family have done more damage to America than bin Laden and ISIS combined. Yes. Do you believe that? Yeah, we're, we're, we did really well after 9-11. I don't think we, the country has given itself enough credit for what we did not do after 9-11. We, we did not restrict all of the freedoms in this country. We did not single out people. Is, is he okay? I mean, are other people concerned about him? Well, I would imagine so. What I'm concerned more about, Tucker, did you hear the reaction of that audience yeah, who cheered when, when a, a guest compares a sitting U.S. president to the guy who carried out 9-11 in bin Laden that killed more than 3,000 people in New York, Pennsylvania, and uh, New York, uh, in, in Washington, obviously, and then yeah. also says that President Trump is worse than ISIS, who just took credit for carrying out an attack just a couple of blocks from here that killed eight people. And the crowd cheers that. And no co-host outside of Meghan McCain, who used to be with this network, actually stood up to him and said, that is ridiculous. It doesn't We've inspire lost confidence. our mind. This makes you hurt your hair. Makes me a little nervous. Joe Concha, as always, thank you. Thanks, Tucker. The president, meanwhile, he's speaking out about the newspaper shooting, calling the killing of those five journalists horrific and horrible. Let's go to our chief White House correspondent, Jim Acosta, for the very latest. Jim, what else is the president saying? Well, President Trump uh, changed his tone on the media today, at least for the moment, saying journalists should not be subjected to violent attacks after the mass shooting in Annapolis. That is a major shift for the president, who has repeatedly called the press the enemy of the people, despite concerns from journalists that his rhetoric creates a dangerous climate. For a president who routinely demonizes the media, it was a significant moment one day after the mass shooting at the Capitol Gazette newspaper in Annapolis. This attack shocked the conscience of our nation and filled our hearts with grief. Journalists, like all Americans, should be free from the fear of being violently attacked while doing their job. But as the president left the room, he would not specify whether this is only a pause in his battle against the press. Mr. President, will you stop calling us the enemy of the people, sir? Obviously, 56%. Even White House counselor Kellyanne Conway, who is rarely rendered speechless, declined to answer the question from CNN's Abby Phillip. Is it time for the president to stop calling journalists the enemy of the people? The president says... Back, guys. Back. Oh, thank Sorry, you very guys. Much. Back. Thank you. Look at all those fake newsers back there. Look at all. That's a lot. It's a critical question for the White House, as the president has repeatedly labeled the press the enemy of the people from early on in his administration. A few days ago, I called the fake news the enemy of the people, and they are. They are the enemy of the people. To just this week. You know, the enemy, the enemy of the people, I call them. As we found at his rally on Monday, his supporters are often swept up in the moment. There are seemingly endless examples of the president's preference for extreme rhetoric. Oh, 
from a tweet showing him body slamming a CNN reporter to his remarks during the campaign. I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Mr. Trump has boasted there are no consequences for his actions. I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. Investigators have found no link between the gunman's actions in Annapolis and any of the rhetoric coming out of Washington. Still, Trump supporter Sean Hannity quickly blamed Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters. I've been saying now for days that something horrible is going to happen because of the rhetoric. Really, Maxine, you want people to create, call your friends, get in their faces. The renewed questions about the president's rhetoric comes as Mr. Trump appears to be searching for a replacement for Chief of Staff John Kelly. Some people think Sources 40, tell CNN 40, the president recently touched on the subject uh, with budget director Mick Mulvaney uh, over dinner this week. The president may have other staffing concerns to consider after aides patched through an apparent prank call to Air Force One earlier this week. That caller pretended to be New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez, who was recently cleared of corruption charges in federal court. Congratulations, great job. You went through a tough, tough situation, and I don't think a very fair situation, but congratulations. Obviously, my constituents are giving me a lot of bees about this immigration thing. Let me just tell you, I want to be able to take care of the situation. I'd like to do the larger solution, and I think we could do a real immigration bill. Now, CNN has learned staffers for Menendez say they were contacted by the White House yesterday asking about the call, apparently unaware that it was a prank. The White House is not commenting, as far as we know, in the last hour or so about how all of this developed. But uh, Senator Menendez has released a statement saying, as someone who has spent my entire career, this is the senator here, trying to convince Republicans to join me in reforming our nation's broken immigration system, I welcome any opportunity to have a real conversation with the president on how to uphold the American values that have guided our family-based immigration policy for the last century. Uh, and Wolf, uh, we should point out uh, that that call uh, is also something that uh, is sparking a statement just now from the White House. Actually, I should point out we're getting a statement just now from the White House on all of this. Uh, this is from a White House official. Uh, apparently, this person did not want to be named. Uh, and the quote goes uh, this way, Wolf, uh, the president wants to be accessible to members and likes engaging them and wants them to have the opportunity to connect. The downside of that is that sometimes the channels are open too widely and mistakes like this happen. So, uh, Wolf, a very interesting uh, comment here from a White House official uh, just in the last uh, several minutes. Uh, they don't acknowledge mistakes over here very often uh, at the White House, but they're apparently acknowledging one and that a prank uh, phone call or a, a comedian was able to talk to the president on Air Force One, raises all kinds of security concerns. If somebody can pretend to be a senator or head of state and call the president on Air Force One, that's obviously something they can't let happen. Yeah, this is a huge, huge embarrassment, but it's much more than that, Jim. As you correctly point out, it's a security problem that someone, a comedian, could pretend to be a United States senator and get a call uh, with the president from Air Force One. Uh, they, they've got to fix this. I don't know what they're going to do, but... Clearly, this was a, a major, major blunder with enormous security ramifications. Uh, Jim Acosta right. over at the White House. So thank you.